Welcome everyone to the new episode of Startup Journey. We talk to entrepreneurs, people who have pushed the limits and build their own brand or their own businesses and learn what inspires them, how, how we can replicate their success in our lives. Today, I'm really excited to have with me Don Wetrick. Don Wetrick is the Innovation Coordinator at Nobsville High School and is the author of Pure Genius, Building a Culture of Innovation and Taking 20% Time to the Next Level. Don is the founder of Start Ed Up, an organization dedicated to help transform the school culture towards innovation and entrepreneurship. Don has interviewed lots of entrepreneurs on his podcast and he, he is the right person for us all to learn about entrepreneurship and how to uh, build something and make it a success. Welcome Don. Thank you for sparing time with us. Please uh, tell us more about yourself. Yeah, my name is, like you said, my name is Don Wetrick. I'm an innovation coordinator at our high school. I'm an author. I'm a podcast host. I'm a dad of three and all around busy guy. Great. Uh, Don, uh, tell us about the started up platform that you have built and why did you start that? What was the reason for that? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I was teaching a high school class and still am called innovation and open source learning. And uh, we're wanting people to be able to think creatively, innovatively to prepare them for the upcoming gig economy, uh, freelance economy. Um, basically I want my students to be able to look for opportunities and not wait around for instruction. Um, so that, that kind of took its own life, uh, end up writing a book about it, end up starting a podcast and, our soft spot has been entrepreneurs. Um, they've seen what we've been doing and they appreciate it because they had that same journey. Uh, so it's been a great way to connect my kids with some of the really interesting people in the entrepreneur space. Don, tell us about your book and walk us through some of the stories of entrepreneurs who happen to be your student. Sure, um, my name, name of the book is uh, Pure Genius, Creating a Culture of Innovation. Um, essentially, I wrote it because I wanted to kind of capture our journey. Uh, it, it, was, it was the first couple of years of our, of our innovation class, the highs and the lows. And it's also kind of a, a roadmap for teachers that might want to do the same thing for their students. It's also not just for teachers. If you're a parent, actually I was on Tom Bilyeu's show um, on Inside Quest and he was one of the first that do not think this is just an education book. This is a book uh, for people that want to start thinking creatively and also just a lot of homeschool parents that seem to have connected with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it was kind of our roadmap and some of the things we did and how we get our students to start thinking like entrepreneurs. So Don, uh, walk us through um, some, of the, some of the products or businesses your students have been involved with. Yeah, I mean, we've had some students that started, um, you know, app writing. Uh, we've had some students that have started at school in Africa. Uh, we've had now uh, like service businesses um my my business like my class this year we've got some kids that are you know they have their own podcast they have their own um we've got like a a, a tree planting subscription service uh to help the environment we've got uh we've got a students that have actually created their own like board game to encourage entrepreneurialism within the k-12 environment um gosh uh i'm forgetting some um, uh, clothing line, uh, yeah, it's all over the place. Uh, and what is the age group of these people? These students? 16 to 18. Oh, that's too young to start something and they have already done that. So that's really cool. Yeah. Um, tell us, um, you as a, you as a person have built your own personal brand and you have stood out then other, from other people other teachers maybe if I can say so um, tell us about that building building your own self brand you know yeah I mean I think the brand was built on basically my students being successful um, in, in a lot of ways you know my brand has been kind of their uh, agents in a way I mean I, I if just moms and dads and aunts and uncles think that what our kids are doing is great that's not good enough so 
through the podcast, through the book, through some of the things that I blog about, I, I kind of share their success. But then also just building the personal brand of, I started this class um, without a description. I mean, this is all kind of made up. And uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, uh, technically that's why I like to share, if not give all the credit to the students. If the students aren't successful, then there is no brand, right? I mean, it's right. just, it's a crazy wacky idea that went nowhere. So their success is, has been paramount in, in getting this to scale up. Great. Uh, Don, how much, how much do you teach or stress to, to your students about building their own personal brand? Quite you, a bit. Actually. If you happen to yeah. be an entrepreneur. Like, you know, this year, especially like our, the greatest gift has been LinkedIn uh, creation here lately. LinkedIn video has been organic. It's not a pay to play algorithm. It seems to be pretty good. So, you know, I always tell them like, even if your idea isn't working out, even if your business is failing, own it, like show the journey. Uh, because a lot of times at age 16, they're learning things that people in their thirties learn. And, um, you know, without a doubt, we're, we're having them promote and just share what they do. Uh, it's so, so, so important, especially if you're young. I mean, a lot of adults expect, you know, Gen Z kids to be talking about dumb things and obsessing over a band or a movie. And I want them to share like, you know, brand your professionalism, brand your journey. Great. Uh, Don, tell us about some of the books or mentors you personally followed in order to write this book or what, what yeah. examples um, you teach your students? Too many to follow. I mean, too many to mention without being inclusive, but uh, without a doubt, I got my start from Daniel Pink. Um, Drive was the origins of this class. And, and Dan has turned in to be a helpful mentor. I actually I helped launched the class because he gave it his blessing. Uh, Tina Selig at Stanford is among my favorite persons ever. Uh, she wrote, my favorite books are uh, Creativity Rules and What I Wish I Knew When I Was 20. Um, then you have this, the stalwarts, the, the, the you know, the Tim Ferrises. Um, uh, I've got to throw Peter Diamandes and Stephen Kotler in there. Uh, Naveen Jain, uh, who hasn't have a book yet, but I'm sure he will. Um, and uh, gosh, I'm probably leaving. And even people like Malcolm Gladwell, who forced me to think, um, they got through his name in there too. Great. Uh, entrepreneurship is very much dependent on your mindset. Uh, the stronger you are mentally, the more strongly you can cope up with that. So tell us about the mindset teaching that you teach your students. Yeah, I mean, I have to we kind of have the opportunities are everywhere mindset. Uh, sit down and shut up and wait for my instructions is about the most toxic and kind of environment you can have. I'm, I'm having them listen to everybody else complain. What problems do you see? Is there an opportunity there? Um, we have this saying, it rhymes, it's catchy, but we want to create seekers and peekers, not moaners and groaners. We are having them seek opportunities and, and, though, and when they congregate together, when they start talking about things, they can peek around the corner. My kids can spot trends a couple of months in advance because they start congregating and they look for opportunities together. Moaners and groaners are just people on social media whining about the economy, whining about politics, whining how the world's unfair. Meanwhile, the people that want to make it happen don't take excuses, they just make it happen. That's the mindset we're trying to create. Your students are actually lucky to have an a teacher like you who, who is guiding them of something which is which is very helpful for their personal career growth tell us uh, something uh, like th there are so many students who have who are who are just mm, working towards getting higher grades and resolving that extra um, puzzle that has been thrown to them tell us what message you have for them like I, um, <laughs> that's the hard message because a lot of those people that are chasing grades think that they're doing the right thing. And that's the hard thing. Like it, it's hard to convince parents that my son needs to get straight A's in all AP classes and not take any threat, no risk whatsoever. Cause if he takes a risk, he might get an A minus and then he won't get into Stanford. Like that's out. That's, that's over. That's the, that's the old way. I mean, mind you, there's probably a benefit to getting into Stanford, but Stanford doesn't admit that many kids. 
And so the parents that are trying to make their kids memorize everything, it is worth jack shit. It's, it's not worth a thing. Getting their kids to do something outside of academia is the new economy. And I feel bad because a lot of kids, even kids that graduate from college, great GPA in what? In, in a career that might not exist in five years? So I, I would tell them to like, do something entrepreneurial, even if it's with a group. You don't have to be a solo entrepreneur. Just start doing something. And if you are trying to get into that famous college, do it by more than just GPA. Start an event. Have a product. Have a club that you started that means something instead of wasting, you know, I shouldn't say wasting, instead of spending all of your time memorizing facts and figures. Everything is Googleable. You don't need to memorize stuff. It doesn't matter. You producing things matters. Don, where do you see the future of jobs? Where, what, will, what kind of jobs will be there? If it can be automated, it will be automated. If, if you are computing something, you're done. Creativity and innovation is one of the very few things that isn't going to be completely dominated by AI. So I, like, if, 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 if you spit out a report, a report can be spit out without you. And that's just, that's the, and then this is what makes people mad because it may be inconvenient. People don't like this, but there's a lot of things that will be completely automated and it's a scary time and we're living in the scary time. And what are we doing to prepare our 18 year olds? Uh, have them memorize stuff and take the SAT. It's bullshit. And it's a fool's game. So what, according to you, should a high school student study today to, to be job employable? Focus on creating and not consuming. I, like I, I, you talked about it earlier, you know, branding is everything. Uh, like, ev like I'm going to borrow Gary V's term, but all company is a media. Every company is a media company. Every person should understand their own personal branding. Because if you are, if you want to be an accountant, right? Um, I could talk to you about why you shouldn't, but if you want to be an accountant, you should be putting out content on why you're going to be the best accountant. Just you saying I'm on this journey will attract people to you. So I would just, I would worry about, I would focus on you creating great content on the areas you're in. And if you want to be the world's greatest, I had a kid in this class just, the other, just a few minutes ago. He makes drones, right? He wants to put together his own little quadcopters. Start putting out right now content that you're going to be a great drone maker. That is so, so important. So even though you may have talents right now, if the only people that know about this talent is your mom and dad, that's nice, but it'd be great if you started acquiring a great network and you acquired a great network because of the things that you do, not the things that you actively consume. So can we say that if you are a creator today, there's no shortage of opportunities for you? Your is the kingdom. If you're a creator right now, you're at an advantage because that puts you into a rarefied air. Very few people are creating. I mean, mind you, more and more people are, especially if it's content worth a damn. If you're, if you're doing videos of kittens and pranks, okay, that's fine. But that's not real. I mean, I'm being biased, but I don't think that that's sustainable content. If you're doing things that make people better, I think that that's a great space to be in. Great. Um, th um, that, that's very useful. Uh, Don, well, that's what you're doing. Yeah, that's exactly that, what you're doing. And that's, you. why, and that's why you're in a good space and you should be. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really neat time to be a creator of positivity, not a creator of the world sucks and everybody sucks and I hate Trump and I hate Democrats and I hate Clinton or whatever your stupid pol you know, political philosophies are. No one cares. People care about wanting to get better. That is something we can all agree on. Yes, that's true because so many people are depressed out there. Uh, maybe they are, they are going through a layoff in their job or Absolutely. some it's relationship good. problem. That's the right. Um, anyways, uh, Don, how do people reach out to you for some student? If uh, you can, nice. you can always uh, email me. Uh, well, first of all, if you want to check out like the, the website, startupinnovation.org, uh, you can always find me on Twitter at Don Wetrick is probably the best place. Great. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Don, for sparing time doing this interview. You sure. have um, given us the right direction as to what students of today should study to become employable tomorrow. Um, thank you very much again. Happy to help, man. Thank you. Thanks.